Urushiol is the component of poison ivy that causes an itchy, red rash to appear. Anyone can develop a sensitivity to urushiol during their lifetime, and this sensitivity may change over time. But there's no way for someone to be completely immune to the effects of urushiol. The poison ivy plant and its relatives are common throughout the United States. Poison ivy leaves are coated with a mixture of chemicals called urushiol. When people get urushiol on their skin, it causes an allergic contact dermatitis. This is a T-cell mediated immune response, also called delayed hypersensitivity, in which the body's immune system recognizes as foreign, and attacks, the complex of urushiol derivatives with skin proteins. The irony is that urushiol, in the absence of the immune attack, would be harmless. The most common treatment for severe contact dermatitis is with corticosteroids, which diminish the immune attack and resulting inflammation. A recent recommendation for mild cases is to use manganese sulfate solution to reduce the itching. Dual weed is also recommended. Allergy is an altered or unwanted immune response. The immune system attacks something which is genuinely foreign, but which would be harmless, were it not for the immune attack. The immune system has evolved to neutralize and eliminate foreign substances from our bodies. However, it cannot tell whether the foreign substance is harmful, so it sometimes attacks harmless substances vigorously, causing an inflammation which can be far more harmful than the foreign substance alone. Dermatitis is an inflammation of the skin. If the allergy which causes the dermatitis is a response to something which came into contact with the skin, it is called allergic contact dermatitis. In addition to poison ivy, other things which contact the skin such as clothing, shampoo, jewelry, makeup, and deodorants can also cause allergic contact dermatitis. Allergic dermatitis can also be caused from within, as when a skin rash develops because of something we ate. Cortosteroids are natural hormones in the body. They are immunosuppressive and anti-inflammatory. They work by affecting gene expression in a complex manner, and the ways they reduce immune inflammation are not fully understood. They reduce the production of inflammatory cytokines and arachidonic acid and its derivatives. The major natural anti-inflammatory corticosteroid in the body is hydrocortisone. Longer-lasting and more potent synthetic analogues of hydrocortisone are often used in the clinic, such as prednisolone, prednisone, or dexamethasone. Delayed hypersensitivity does not start to be noticeable until several hours to a full day after exposure to the antigen. T lymphocytes recognize the foreign substances, usually after the antigen is eaten, degraded, and presented by so-called antigen-presenting cells such as Langerhans cells in the skin, or macrophages. Urushiol metabolites are presented by this and other mechanisms. The T lymphocytes pour out inflammatory signal substances called cytokines. These call in armies of white blood cells called monocytes, which become macrophages. The macrophages become activated by the cytokines and attack everything in the vicinity, and can cause severe tissue damage. In addition to poison ivy, a good example is the skin reaction to injected tuberculosis antigen. In fact, when tuberculosis bacteria infect the lung, it is the delayed hypersensitivity against them which destroys the lung. Immediate hypersensitivity occurs within minutes of exposure to the foreign substance, also called the antigen. Some people also have immediate hypersensitivity to bee stings, and this can be life-threatening if not treated immediately. Immediate hypersensitivity occurs when the body produces a special kind of antibodies, called immunoglobulin E, to the antigen. Mast cells and basophils bind the IgE on their surfaces. When antigen binds to the IgE, these cells pour out vasoactive amines, such as histamine. It is these vasoactive amines which cause the inflammation. Antihistamines are usually an effective treatment for localized reactions. Complement-dependent hypersensitivity occurs within an hour or so of exposure to antigen. It usually starts when the most common kind of antibody, immunoglobulin G, reacts with the antigen. This in turn brings in white blood cells which attack everything, and can cause severe tissue damage. An example of this kind of reaction is serum sickness, which occurs after a foreign anti-serum or other protein is injected. Other examples are a reaction to a large injection of penicillin, penicillin depot, or to inhaling plant dusts over a long period of time. 
Complement-dependent inflammations require a relatively large amount of antigen. In contrast, immediate and delayed responses can be severe even with tiny amounts of antigen. If you are looking to avoid getting sick or avoid catching flu, click the link in the description below to grab your free copy of a secret guide which unveils how you can boost your immunity with just a simple weird little trick. If you have found this video helpful, please like this video. It really means a lot to us. And if you think it might help one of your friends, don't be shy and share this video with them as well. That way, we all can help people we care about to live happier life. Make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to receive more informational videos that will improve your health and lifestyle. Thank you for watching this boost my immune system after chemo power video and we will see you on our next video.